Hello everyone, Nate here, and I just got a new solo key, which is an open source hardware two-factor authentication token. So by popular demand, I'm going to do an unboxing, setup, and review video. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, first up, before I do anything, let me say the Solo Key has not sponsored this video. I have not communicated with them in any way, shape, or form. They did not send me this product. I went out and bought this because I have a YubiKey. And when you get a hardware two-factor token like that, it is generally a good idea to get two of them so that you have one as a backup. Believe me, I've had only one in the past and the key itself was fine, but my USB-C port died. So basically the key became useless and it was extremely difficult to recover all of my accounts at that point. So it is a good idea to have a backup. I figured I could just get another YubiKey, but I thought it might also be fun to explore some of the open source options out there. So I went ahead and got the solo key. And I also plan to get a nitro key, but it looks like they're right about to release the version three. So I wanted to wait until that comes out and I'll go ahead and do a video about that one too, whenever that comes out. So for those of you who have never heard of Solo Key, Solo Key is an open source U2F and FIDO2 key. It's very similar to a YubiKey, but it's open source and it's a lot more limited depending on which YubiKey you're comparing it to. Some YubiKeys have a lot of capabilities like they can store your PGP keys and stuff like that, but there are also YubiKeys that only do the U2F like this guy does. So for most people, I think that's probably not gonna be a big issue, but it is worth throwing that out there. Unlike YubiKeys though, solo keys are considerably less expensive, so I'm excited to look into all of that. If you wanna learn more about two-factor and the different types and why hardware is better, be sure to check out my video on that. But the long story short is hardware is about as good as you can get. It's about as quote unquote unhackable as you can get, although nothing is unhackable. All right, with that, let's go ahead and jump into this guy. So it showed up in this very, very tiny little envelope, which I thought was kind of neat. And uh, there's a little, slip here on the back. So I think I got the nano version. I can't really remember to be honest with you, but uh, this is gonna be a very uneventful unboxing, I'm assuming, because it, you know, we're just opening a an envelope and seeing what's in here. So something here in a little, this looks like one of those electrical resistant electrostatic shielding, yep. And this is the actual solo key itself. It says FIDO2 on it. it, says open source hardware, it's got the logo. And then it gives me a link to go get started. So uh, real quick, before I open that, there's something else in here. Looks like a little business card. Solo Keys, thank you for your purchase. And there's their email, there's their social media to get started, source at, and then, oh wow. And it's even got like the, um, what is this? The electrical schematic on the back. So like here's the front. And then here's the electrical schematic on the back. So, I mean, this is like fully open source. This isn't just open source software. This is like open source hardware too, in the sense that they're showing you how it's done. That's really neat. All right, now we'll go ahead and very carefully open this guy up. And yep, I went ahead and got the Nano. It looks, ooh, oh no, oh no, okay. So it came in a couple of different pieces. Here's the actual solo key itself. Looks very similar to a YubiKey. And then here's some casing, it looks like. Kind of wish they had sent it all in one bag, but whatever. So this looks a lot like a Raspberry Pi where I have to assemble it. But fortunately, like a Raspberry Pi, it doesn't look too hard. I've always wondered if anybody in the comments knows, feel free to tell me why it is that they send them not pre-assembled when they're so easy to assemble. Like, why don't they just do it themselves? I don't know, I'm asking. So again, feel free to let me know. Oh, okay, so it gives me two choices of sleeve, I think is what these are. So I got a, let's see here, I'll hold it up. I got a red one and like a red and black one. And I think I'm gonna go with the red and black cause that's kind of cool. So, okay, so now my electronics should be protected. Um, I'm not gonna lie. On a, a physical hardware review side, I feel a little bit uh, skeptical of the resilience of this. I mean, like it, it feels like good rubber, it's quality rubber, but just the fact that I have to assemble it and it just slides right in there, I don't know. I'm a little skeptical of how uh, physically resilient this is gonna be, but um, I don't know, we'll find out. I mean, to be fair, it's a nano, so it's not really supposed to leave my device. It's just supposed to kind of sit there and live. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. All 
Okay, so I've been using this little guy for about a month now ish maybe a little more maybe a little less i don't really know i didn't note it and what is time anyways we're all living on pandemic time where it's all made up i've been using it long enough that i have a new microphone new glasses and a new poster that i hope you guys like because i'm stoked about it on the topic of the new microphone i will try to match the audios as much as possible from the earlier video in this video but if it doesn't quite work out i apologize in advance anyways point is i've been using it about a month so what is my final verdict well, short, straight, and to the point, it's a great key. I mean, it's really simple, but it does everything that the average person needs. Now, to clarify, it only does U2F and FIDO2. So, basically, that means it'll work with a lot of websites like Bitwarden, Google, Twitter, PayPal, but there are some other more advanced features that it doesn't do. Now, if you're a power user, you may want to look into a YubiKey because YubiKeys do some of those more advanced features. Things like storing PGP keys, for example. The most obvious one that I ran into in my experience is that the solo key does not open my KeyPass XE database on Fedora. Only my YubiKey will do that. But like I mentioned, it does work with Bitwarden. So keeping in mind that my target audience is like people who don't have particularly high threat models and are just looking to be a little bit more secure than everyone else out there, I think that's plenty fine. Bitwarden does note that some features may be missing and they encourage you to use a YubiKey instead. I don't know what features those were. Again, it worked just fine for me, but those of you who have higher threat models or again, are more like power users might want to look into something else. Again, it worked on Google and Twitter with no issues, GitLab, all that kind of stuff. It did work on PayPal, but this is where I learned that some services only let you have a single hardware key at a time. So in order to register my solo key, I had to deregister the YubiKey, which really sucks because like I said at the beginning of the video, hardware keys, you're supposed to have a backup in case something goes wrong. So that was really disappointing from companies that do that. But also PayPal is kind of a garbage company that I'm trying to move away from. So that doesn't really surprise me. I also mentioned at the start of the video that I had some concerns about the construction and the cheap little rubber, but honestly, that didn't seem to be an issue. It seems like the rubber kind of stuck out a little bit when I was plugging it in, like kind of pushed out a little bit, maybe like that but it didn't stop me from being able to press the button when prompted. And I mean, it's still there, everything's fine. And also my computer is pretty used and a little dinged up at this point. So maybe that was a hardware issue on my end. You may not notice the same issues, but either way, construction was fine, held up. I went out of town a couple times with this guy plugged in. So yeah, everything worked great. Now, one last note on the topic of pushing the little button, something interesting I found as I'm getting back into hardware tokens is that the Hardware actually feels more convenient than TOTP, which is the six digit code. With TOTP, you sign into a site, you have to go get your phone, you have to look at the code, you have to type it in, or even if you have it saved on like a cross device kind of thing, you still have to copy it and paste it. And to be fair, those are not exactly huge inconveniences. It's not like I have to get up, move around a lot, it doesn't take very long, but even so, hardware is just quicker. I log in, it prompts me, I push a button on the side of my computer, and boom, I'm in. It's just, it's so, simple. Unfortunately, hardware tokens are not widely accepted yet. So despite all this, even if you do go with a hardware token, which I recommend, you're probably still going to have to use TOTP as well for some of your accounts. Having said that, the more people that use hardware, the more likely it is that other companies and services will start to offer it and it'll become more widely available. Yeah, so that's really it. If you're looking for a hardware token and you want something open source, the solo key seems like a great choice. If you're looking for a nano factor specifically, which is the kind where you just plug it in and leave it there, and you're only gonna use U2F and FIDO2, then the solo key is probably your best choice because the YubiKey nano costs like twice as much. Granted, it does a lot more, which is why I said if you're only gonna use it for U2F and FIDO2. A real quick note before anyone asks, like why would you wanna leave your YubiKey plugged in? Because technically you can use them for things like logging into the computer. I'm I'm using these to protect against remote account takeover. My personal threat model says that if somebody already has my device, I'm probably in a pretty bad spot anyways, and not having the YubiKey plugged in is probably not gonna save me. They'll probably find it by searching the house or something like that. So I'm not really trying to protect from physical compromise. I'm trying to protect from remote compromise. Your threat model may vary. That may be a concern for you. And if so, you may wanna go with a different model of key that can be very easily unplugged and kept on like a keychain or something like that. If you're going for a more full size form factor, then the YubiKey and the solo key are about the same price. And again, at that point, it becomes a matter of, do you prefer something open source? And do you have any more advanced needs out of it? Because YubiKey does offer the full version that does like the PGP keys and stuff like that. It is considerably more expensive, but they also offer a cheaper version that's about the same price as 
the solo key that only does U2F, just like the solo key. So they're basically the same, but one is open source. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I trust YubiKey, they have a great reputation, but some people may prefer the open source and that's totally fine. So I think at the top of this video, I didn't do a support section because I wasn't sure if I was gonna have a sponsor or something by now, but at this point I don't. So I'm just gonna say, if you enjoyed this video, you found this review helpful, please go ahead and donate and support us if you can. We accept cryptocurrencies, we accept fiat donations, we have affiliate links if you wanna subscribe to a service that we recommend and we get a little bit of a kickback. I always say that every little bit helps and I really do mean it. So. If you're able to donate, it is really appreciated. If you're not, I totally get it. Times are tough right now. You can still help by sharing the video around, letting people know. When I was prepping for this video, I noticed there's actually not a lot of solo key content out there. So I'm sure there's a lot of people who would appreciate this kind of up-to-date information. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful to you guys. If you're on the fence about which hardware token to get, hopefully this has helped you come to a decision and help you figure out which one's right for you. So far between the two that I've talked about, the YubiKey and the Solo Key, I think that they're both really, really good choices. Like I said in the support section, I'm gonna review the Nitro Key here soon, which is also probably equally great, but I'll let you guys know. Hardware, yeah, like I said, it's weirdly more convenient than TOTP. I know it seems like it's a lot more advanced and a lot scarier, but it's super easy and I highly recommend it if you can afford one. So definitely check these out. If you're interested, go ahead and buy one. And again, Solo Key did not sponsor this video. I did not contact them in any way, shape or form. But if you happen to be watching this and you work at Solo Key, really cool product. Good job. I, I like it a lot. I'd like to see it be able to unlock my KeyPass database, but it's all good. So thank you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this guy somewhere safe and this is gonna be my new little backup hardware token. I think that's all there is to be said. I'm gonna go before I end up repeating myself. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.